Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Madeira. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about travelling with your portable radio setup, particularly air travel. So I'm going to look at the rig, I'm going to look at the masts, I'm going to look at the antenna and then uh, we're going to talk about batteries because I think that's the bit that gives everyone anxiety. So let's start with the, the radio. So this is what I took and this is my uh, shack in a bag practically. So you've probably seen this before, but I took my KX2, it's got an internal battery, there is an additional uh, spare battery here, more about batteries later on. Um, 41 foot random sits in here along with um, my 9 to 1. I didn't plan on using the uh, 41 foot random and 9 to 1 as it's a compromise antenna. Um, I wanted to stick to resonant antennas for this trip, but this is just here as a backup. What I would normally have in this case, uh, when I'm travelling around the, the UK mountains, would be my, my guy in pegs. I took these out, um, I didn't want this in my carry-on luggage because it's quite a sharp object and could be seen to be a weapon. So these went in the, uh, the checked-in luggage. But this pretty much went through the, uh, through the scanner at security at the airport, and my hand baggage, I was not asked to open it. Um, you may be asked to open your bag and show that the electronic devices are real, in which case you would just have to turn your radio on and show that it is actually a real electronic device. Okay, let's talk about the masts I took. Uh, the first time I went portable um, in a foreign country many years ago was actually in Rwanda, and the only mast I had at the time was a uh, fiberglass fishing pole, which did the job really well, but it was a metre long and it was quite difficult to, to get into my luggage. This is a, a spider beam's seven metre mast, um, and the good thing is the sections are fairly short. I think it's about 60 centimetres long um, when it's like this, so it can actually sit in most suitcases diagonally. So that gets checked into the hold. I also took my um, trusty Carbon 6, um, I was going to take this as, as, as carry-on luggage because it, you know, it's so small and light. However, I read somewhere that these can be construed to be a club or a baton and it may get refused um, at airport security. So I didn't take any chances. This also went in the hold. That's simply the sleeve I use if I'm jamming it into rocks and then the mast just pops in. Why did I take two masts? Well, um, because of my distance from Europe and the UK in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I wasn't really sure how things were going to go with my little radio, so I wanted to um, take my uh, vertical uh, antenna for 20 metres. And it doesn't work with a carbon mast because the carbon is conductive. I needed a fiberglass mast to run a vertical, which is why this one came. And um, <clears throat> once I was kind of satisfied after my first activation that I'd, I'd get away with less, um, on the next one, I just used um, an end fed with this. Right, antennas. Well, as I said, I wanted to have efficiency uh, as much as possible. So this is my 20 meter band. Uh, it's a mono band antenna, up and, up and outer. And um, it, it runs vertically up the, the mast. And um, there's one um, counterpoise leg that sits on top of a walking pole. Yes, I did bring my walking sticks with me as well. So that got used on the first activation, um, and then after that, for flexibility, I used the trusty end-fed half-wave, which is 67 feet of wire, um, 49 to 1, and 5 metres of skinny coax. Now this um, skinny coax also got used with the, with the vertical. The good thing about the, uh, the end-fed half-wave is it gives me 40 20, 15 and 10 as a resonant antenna, but with the, the tuner inside the KX2 I can also use it on a couple of other bands as well, notably 17 metres. So that was that. Um, what else did I bring? Um, just a, a guying system that I had to use on one summit. Um, there's the pegs, I say they went in the hold. Uh, luxury item for this trip was my hand mic. Okay, let's talk about the main event. Travelling uh, by air with lithium batteries. 
If you check your National Aviation Authority website, they will give you guidelines. Um, there's one for America, one for UK, there's, there's international laws. They generally quote battery capacities of 100 um, watts per hour, okay? So that's not something that's normally written on your battery. If you look at this one here, it's a 12 volt battery at 3 amps per hour, or 3000 milliamps per hour. Turn that into watts per hour, 12 times 3. So that's a 36 watt hour, well under the 100 watt hour number that's quoted by um, all the aviation authorities around the world. However, do check with your airline because some airlines allow more. And um, I certainly, I flew with British Airways and they do allow more. I'm not going to quote the figure because you need to check yourself. Okay, so the other thing on batteries, they have to be labelled um, and also any terminals must be protected from short circuiting. Now this is, you know, it's this has got a, a regular connector on it and it's when it's inside this um, little bag here it's not touching anything else but you might have to put some tape or a bit of rubber over the terminals of your battery just to make sure. Again, check your uh, airline's website. You're allowed to take umpteen batteries with you in many cases because so many devices now have lithium batteries in them. If you were going on holiday with a cell phone, a tablet, a laptop, even a GoPro camera, um, a radio, an electric toothbrush, etc., etc., uh, you're, I think you're allowed up to 14 batteries on, on some airlines. So that's pretty much it. I hope that helps. I hope that um, gives you confidence to give it a try. And if you watch my next video, uh, you'll see how I got on in Madeira. 7-3 for now. Bye-bye.